Hi everybody, I'm Cheslin Amato and I am bereavement specialist and visual artist and I am here to take you on a journey in mark making. Mark making for courage and expression, for resilience and for joy. So maybe everybody's heard the word drawing and often drawing means what? It means seeing some kind of an image on a piece of paper. Maybe we recognize it, maybe we don't. But often based in looking or observing people, places, and things, sometimes coming from our insides. So what we're going to be doing is we're extracting a quality from the activity of drawing, and that is mark making. Mark making is the fundamental action of drawing, which is to allow a mark to issue from our drawing tool. We bring it through our heads, down through our necks and arms and shoulder, and our drawing tool becomes the means of documenting that experience. Just so. Keeping our, roots, our wrists loose, standing a bit away from, or even when sitting, that you kind of want to keep your arm fairly extended just to give yourself the opportunity to move. Drawing is an act of mark making. And for our purposes is right now, many of us are deep in loss and grief. And at this particular moment, we're dealing with this profound global crisis. How can we use mark making as a way to become one with ourselves, to become present in the moment, let go of where we came from just before and where we might be going after we do this, and to give ourselves a moment of respite, an oasis. Allow drawing to bring you to your center and to nurture that center through this activity and then have that, ce that center be a place out of which you can then move forward and in a beautiful, beautiful rhythm. Nuts and bolts for this experience. You're going to need, at minimum, any eight and a half by 11 sheets, even the back of something that's already printed, and ordinary pencils and pens, ballpoint pens, that's at minimum. If you have it, then it's terrific. You can, even markers like uh, Sharpies, although non-toxic and not smelly are best. And there are different kinds of markers you may have, charcoal pencils, and maybe art graphite pencils, and they come in all kinds, and some of you may have those already. As well, I invite you to consider any kind of colored pencils you may have home, including watercolor pencils, soluble pencils. And then if you have crayons, as well as water-soluble crayons, then you can work with water, both with colored pencil, uh, watercolor pencil and the watercolor crayon with a brush and water. So I'm wanting to just give you a little bit of a sense of how to work with materials and in any number of the um, exercises you're going to be able to choose whether you work with one hand or two hands, whether you work with the hand you're comfortable with or the one you're not comfortable with. Of course there are some ambidextrous people, so okay, lucky for you. And um, so. I'm going to just demonstrate using both uh, hands for some of these. These are just regular pencils to give you a feeling. And I'm really inviting you to really just put some oomph into the drawing. Press down. Just allow yourself to act with confidence. Making those marks, letting your body speak through your arms and hands onto that piece of paper. Have all the energy in your whole body just coming together through your drawing tools. You have charcoal pencils just to give you a feeling for how, it, it, actually it looks kind of, it's, it's not that easy to tell the difference right now, but charcoal pencil is, is flat, a flat black, whereas graphite is more of a dark silver. Then you even have markers, right? 
This is a Sharpie. And then there are more painterly type markers that are thicker that some of you may or may not have. Oh. And then if you have water-soluble crayons, and then we dip our brush to the water, And finally, we have pencil. Green is taking over. Look at this feeling wheel. So we all have a myriad of sensations of heart and mind and body and through time an enormous vocabulary has developed around these words to sort of name, give name to these sensations. So I'm inviting you to take a look at this particular feeling wheel and just look at all of the words. Let them wash over you and notice the ones that stand out and maybe allow five or six to stand out, maybe ten at most. And if you want to, you can write them down. But the main thing is that you just have sort of hovered for a moment noticing what stands out. Okay? So just do that for a few minutes. So, Fear, anxious, worried, overwhelmed, perplexed, astonished, amazed, despair, optimistic. 